Alright, my presentation is on Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi. A uh, brief description of his life is he was born in Switzerland in 1746. His father died when he was only five years old, so he was brought up mainly by his mother. Um, he attended the University of Zurich and began to study politics, but later changed to educational reform. In 1769, he was married and bought a farmhouse, which he opened as a school, but uh, it soon failed. In 1798, the French invaded Switzerland, and a group of orphan children were left without food nor a place to live. Pestalozzi took them under his care and converted a convent into a schoolhouse for them. Later, that building was taken by the French to use as a hospital. And in 1799, Pestalozzi established a school at Bergdorf. He continued to teach there for five more years. In 1802, it was documented that Pestalozzi made a trip to Paris and tried to convince Napoleon to establish a plan of national education. But Napoleon said he couldn't trouble himself about the alphabet. In 1805, he moved and established a school and worked for 20 more years in education. But the school began to grow in size and popularity, and some of the teachers um, started to change Pestalozzi's original ideas. Many conflicts arose, and in 1825, at the age of 80, he retired to the place of his youth and died at Brugge on February 17, 1827, after writing The Adventures of His Life. Um, Pestalozzi wrote... A few books in 1780, he wrote a series of ideas outlining his basic theory of education. He said, education begins at home and should occur naturally through direct experience. And these ideas were published in a book called The Evening Hours of a Hermit. The very next year, he wrote his masterpiece called Leonard and Gertrude. This book described a story of a woman who made changes within her own home, which effect, affected an entire village of people and made changes for the better. His work became a bestseller in Germany and his name became recognized on an international level. Pestalozzi believed that children should not be given ready-made answers but should arrive at answers themselves. He said they should be taught to judge and reason. The aim is to educate the whole child. Intellectual education is only a part of that plan. He said it was important for us to keep in balance or equilibrium three elements. He referred to them as hands, heart, and head. Each one of them reflected a different part of education. He said the head applies to intellectual knowledge, the hands coincide with physical and technical education, and the heart relates to moral and religious education. And only through all three of these could a person become a whole man. The love of those we would educate is the sole and everlasting foundation in which to work, said Pestalozzi. Without love, neither the, ed the physical nor the intellectual powers will develop naturally. As a teacher, he abolished flogging, which was common practice among educators. And to me, it just goes to say he was way ahead of his time. Um, he wanted to get rid of the verbosity of meaningless words, so he developed a word and a doctrine called Ang Chang. This was direct concrete observation, often inadequately called sense perception or object lessons. He said no word was to be used for any purpose until adequate Ang Chang had proceeded. The same method is used by the MTC when teaching foreign languages. They teach us not to use, to learn a word in a foreign language and then convert it to English and then to an object, but rather we should learn a foreign language by learning a word and relating it directly to an object. And that's how Pestalozzi taught his his students foreign, foreign languages. A man learns by action. Life shapes us, and the life that shapes us is not a matter of words, but action. William Kilpatrick summarized Pestalozzi's efforts into six principles. First, he had a concern with social justice and a commitment to work with those who have suffered within society. He saw education as central to the improvement of social conditions. He wanted even the poor to be educated. This is similar to the desires of Christ as stated to the Nephites. As they began to grow wicked in pride, great divisions arose, and only the upper class were educated. Second, he used sympathy for peasant life and his remembrance of his mother's care as a guideline. He said there can be no doubt that within the living room of every household are united the basic elements of all true human education in its whole range. Third, he stressed 
the his concern with equilibrium between elements, head, hands, and heart, and the dangers of attending to just one and not all three. Fourth, he's a classic example of the reflective practitioner. He used observation and reflection and was not afraid to make changes. Fifth, he attempted to form a school which would combine education and work. The school was to be a production unit so that the children could finance their own learning. He wanted the school to be self-sustaining and not rely on government funding. Last, he strove to combat the tyranny of method and correctness. In Aristotle's terms, he would put that which, he would put that which is right or good before that which is correct. His educational method emphasizes the importance of providing a loving, family-type environment in which the child can grow and flourish, becoming a whole person, balancing intellectual, physical, and technical abilities with emotional, moral, ethical, and religious growth. According to Pestalozzi, when individuals are edu educated this way, social improvement and regeneration occurs. In order to obtain more experience from nature, Pestalozzi expanded the elementary school curriculum to include geography, natural science, fine art, and music. He said the classroom should be like a family. The atmosphere should be loving and caring, like a good Christian family, where family members are cooperative, loving, and kind to one another. Family was, for Pestalozzi, an essential component of education. He suggested that teachers should always be loving and kind, and earn the trust of the children. He said that discipline only served to alienate children from their teachers and prevent, prevented normal development. Pestalozzi had a profound effect on all branches of education, and his influence is far from being exhausted. Many schools in America have adopted his practices. However, this his hope that this method of education would lead to the resolution of social problems and regeneration of society has not been realized. I believe it, it wasn't because his ideas were wrong, but because the people who, were t who he was teaching the ideas to fail. And that's why his schools failed and the atmosphere became corrupt. I agree with many of his teachings, if not all that I read about. Um, Pestalozzi presented two general purpose purposes of education, for development of the individual and the improvement of society. That's exactly why we are educated today. He, he strived to educate the whole child, not just their intellect. I believe that we do not do enough today to educate the whole child. We need to continue to develop a balance among the three areas, the head, hands, and heart, so that we can educate each person into a whole man. I agree that moral and religious education is a necessary part of educating a whole man, and without it, something will always be missing in our education system. Education provides the means for general development of the whole society, and education plays a central role in the improvement of the society. And I hope that I can incorporate a great deal of the philosophy of Johann in my attempt at helping each child develop into a whole man.